planting churches, planting communities, invading Babylon, building excellent families, raising godly children. You know, like I was telling some people, I said, how did Kennedy Hagin do it? He has generation fought serving God. I said, that's a key. You don't understand that I am gone physically. Me and my wife, we have served God well in our generation. We have gone to be with the Lord. Our generations are following God. It's a key. Somebody entered into it. That's a, that's some, that is what you call everlasting wisdom. Your father broke into something that you are, you are still enjoying. That includes riches also. Natural riches. Generations. You know, Abraham broke into something. Jacob, Isaac are tapping into it. Those are wisdom, everlasting wisdom that we need to deploy through this message. Can we say amen? amen. I don't know if you are not answering me. Amen. So don't think that, you know, this escapism mentality that will just escape. The world will get darker. Jesus is not going to take us out of it. We have to be ready for a dark world. A world that will be darker as in darker than what I see now. And we will still be alive, but we have to be shining light. I have seen, I have seen, I've had spiritual experiences of the future. I won't lie to you, it was really dark. But the only thing I see is a light in the church I've never seen before. I see a different kind of church. So, we must be ready for that future. And not be deceiving ourselves that something, a magic will happen. No, we have to be ready. We have to be prepared. We have to use the world to grow in. Because you'll be living in a very dark world. One of the things you need to combine, how do you live in a nuclear world? We are in a nuclear world. You have to be able to deal with that. You have to be able to deal with that. There is a tendency that a nuclear world can break out. How do we live in such a world? Now, so this message will not just save our soul. It must keep our body. We have to grow there. Of course, this isn't a growth in understanding. Because you are going to live in a nuclear world. Somebody, like, you know, put in, put in, you know. And the guy in Korea, they are, they, those guys, you know, the spirits, angels are holding them. The war in Ukraine, they, uh, Russia almost eats a nuclear reactor in Ukraine that could have cost the whole of Europe to go gagas. Just God just saved that, protected that. You know, sometimes we don't know these things. So we have, you know, so we are living in a challenging world. But we need to grow above it. I'm not hearing your amen. amen. So this is, what, this is the word Jeremiah gave them. Build ye houses, dwell in them, plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Verse 6. Take ye wives and begat sons and daughters. You know, build strong families. Marry. Tell them they were say marry. Uh, Jesus is not coming tomorrow. You better marry and enjoy marriage. And build a strong family. Raise godly children. I'm talking to single brothers and sisters. Amen. I have a vision for marrying. His kingdom vision for marriage. Amen. I stop talking spiritually. God is not, it's like, Pastor, God is not leading me. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, grow up. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters. Amen. I notice marriage has helped Pastor Zija, Pastor Friday. That they have become more mature, more, you know, more handsome. Pastor CG is more handsome. Yeah. Pastor Friday is more handsome. Yeah. You can see marriage is good. Look at Bryce. Look at his beard. Yeah. Huh? He's shining for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So come and join us. Eh? But you have to grow up. Eh? We'll test you. You're ready. It's called Igbe Yawo. Igbe. So, take ye wives, begat sons and daughters, uh, and take wives for your sons. Look at that. So, they want you to say you, uh, you will live long. Uh, don't be afraid that Pastor Oh, uh, Lekuse. Amen. He said, take wives for your sons. Amen. I don't want to enter into the revelation behind this. Let me just go. I give your daughters to husbands. You know, I have daughters, not just physical. Yeah. I have spiritual daughters. Yeah. And I, w- I want them to marry. Yeah. Amen. Give to husbands that they may be sons and daughters that ye may be what? Increase there and not diminished. 
So God does not want us to diminish in any way. We must occupy. That's how you grow. When you are growing in your soul stature, you become a government on the earth. The church is a powerful institution. Roman Empire could not do anything about it. As they were killing, they were increasing. They were killing and they were increasing. That's how powerful the church is. You can't, oh, you can't chance the church. The best you can do is that you can put them under. When you put the church underground, they grow faster. Go and check the church in China. The church in, in Arabian countries, they are growing like, they are growing like, like bees. Verse 7. Let's round up. And seek the peace of the city I have caused you to be carried away. So because this is First Thessalonians chapter 2. That's why we must pray for government. That's why we must vote. That's why we must, be, we must participate. Because the peace of Nigeria is our peace. I'm not hearing your amen. So don't be ignorant about such things. Huh? And pray unto the Lord for it. For the, in, in the peace thereof shall be your peace. Verse 8. For thus saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither akin to your dreams which have they caused you to be dreamed. Verse 9. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. I don't want to go into this. Is very, very sensitive. Verse 10. Now says, this is a common scripture. For thus saith the Lord, after that after 70 years be accomplished, at Babylon. So that there's a season for everything God does. Now, God can prophesy through the late Pa Elton, for instance, that Nigeria will be known for righteousness. It may take 100 years. It depends on us. It may take 200 years. Babe. It can take 500 years. You know, when God does not exist in the realm of time, so we must know what to do. Me, this is how I believe. The prophecy of Nigeria being known for righteousness is dependent on the church. If the church does not align with righteousness, it can't come to pass. Believe me or not. It's beyond, you know, we thank God for the signs we are seeing, you know, at legs becoming first. Those things have been happening before now. That's not the key. Okay? Nigerians do well everywhere. These are the ones we know. Go and check medicine. Check every field. A Nigeria is leading. Is the truth. I'm not saying anything. You can go and do your research. The father of the internet is a Nigerian. It's called Philippe Megueli. They are everywhere. Nigeria succeed everywhere. That does not mean Nigeria as a country will fulfill that prophecy. What will make that world come to pass is the church aligning with righteousness. It is that that can now, you know, that can now ripple into the nation. If it's the other way, it can't even be, I don't even see the possibility of the other way. If not, it will be temporal. So after several years it be accomplished, I will visit you and perform my good work to you in causing you to return to this place. Then this is where the normal scripture that we normally quote in rounding. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, say the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you what an expected end. So while they were going through captivity in Babylon, God was saying that I don't have evil thoughts. That my hand for you is what? Peace and what? A future. Okay, now what does this teach us in closing? The nature of the everlasting gospel is the restoration of a kingdom lifestyle of flourishing in the earth amidst darkness and opposition from the gates of, of hell. This will require longevity and increase in our momentum to the commitment of God's kingdom purpose. That's number one. This is all, will also demand that we have vision to transfer the legacy of God from generation to generation. So we have to raise our children. We have to raise our children's children. Are you following me? We have to have plans to have build strong family values. Some of us must have plans. God wants to bless us. Those are God called, for instance, to be entrepreneurs. You will build corporations that last for years. Build schools. I've told you now, school is a problem. Eh? You take your child to one school. Before you know it, they have discipled your child. 
Can, you know, some of you, God will grant grace into such things. You will build a school that will become heaven on earth. Amen. When they bring rascal to the school, you culture them. Amen. Now, you know, those things, you can't do them. You, need, you know, now you must understand. Thank you. My wife said that. I will give them get there. You cannot just do them because you have vision. You grow to do it. They must first save your soul to a degree. Eh? To be able to even do that kind of thing. God must have worked with you well. That you can build such an environment where God can what? Walk through. So, and many of such things. You know, we must build strong families like that. Even have territorial influence. God was telling me that a time will come where churches will have control cities. That will be so strong in terms of authority that will control, will control cities. Now I need control. I'm talking about having physical influence. Spiritual influence on a city. So that in a city, nothing will go wrong because of the people that live there. Certain things will not happen, you know. Certain influences are put to minimums. I, I, I studied the Welsh revival. I told you for one year, there was no crime. That was territorial. For one year, there was no crime. People were not stealing. The, during Phoenix revival, and these are revivals, the kingdom will be greater. I'm not hearing amen. The manifestation of the kingdom will be greater. It will be greater. It will show greater power and government upon the soul and human life. You know? In Phoenix revival, brothels will be shut down. Aqua centers will be shut down. People, you know, willingly, people will be coming for meetings hearing doctrine. So we are getting there. I'm not hearing your amen. amen. Hallelujah. So the nature of the wisdom in God's life is that which thrives and flourishes even more in limitations, oppositions, and will not bow down to defeat, failure, and hopelessness. Because the kingdom increases. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Uh, God bless you. We'll continue next month. Okay. It took me close, almost two hours, okay? So it's like a message on its own. Okay. So, but can we, can we have questions to this effect? Do we have any questions so far? Seven questions. Okay, let's see how we can attempt them. Um, go, go, we, can we still have communion service and baby dedications, okay? Uh, we'll rush, and if we can't finish, we'll postpone them, okay? We are doing question and answer on Tuesday, okay? This Tuesday, I, I said so. so. For those that don't come on Tuesday, you can stream online anyway. We'll be handling questions for, for July on Tuesday. Okay, uh, this is mommy zone. Thank God. Um, amen. Okay, so meeting doesn't start at 2 p.m. <laughs> service starts at middle service starts at 5.30. We start service 5, 5.30. 5.30 most yeah. times, yes. So, and it's true. Check around, do any thriving business you see. Check all the big corporations, very tr business that are really, really thriving. They don't, they don't, no, don't show me one, one business you've seen that is thriving that works from 10 to 2. So if you want to build a business, you want to build a business that is not just only to feed your mouth and that of your husband and the child, then you can't be doing a business for 10 to 2 p.m. So, and he said we should strike balance between business hours. Business hours... Uh, and church meetings time are different. Church, and, and church meetings... At least or during the week, we meet in the evenings. 5.30. So, there's nothing that stops you... At all. Most, most people in Inuador, we, we work from um, 9 to 5. Yes. So, if you call us 5 o'clock... That's you okay. come to meeting by... You get to meeting by 5.36. So, meeting should not be an excuse to do a business between 10 and 2. So... Again, let me even add to that. One of the things you must learn is to build a system. I maybe remember the business training I took with KBN last year. How to build a business system. A system is that you can live and your business is still running. I've told you, if you cannot do that, you, you know, you don't have a job, you own a job. When you work for someone, you have a job. When you have a business that you can't live, you own a job. A business, you must build a business system. It may not be immediately, but over time, you have to build a business system that can run outside you. If it's not that, you don't have a business, you have a job. 
So, even if your business needs to run till seven, but you can leave five while you have your staff wait till seven. That's why you're the owner. That's the privilege you have as um, having a business of your own. Am, am I talking to someone? So, you have to learn how to build a business system, okay? There is a way to build a business system. It is the not, it's a advantage available on the earth. Unbelievers have access to it. So, it's not something you cannot do. You just need to learn how to do it. So, meetings, um, midweek meetings are in the, meet, uh, in the evening. You have morning. And you, why should you even want to open by 10? Huh? Okay. 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 Okay, is, is, that, is that, I think it was a, okay, okay, good. It's no, obviously, it's not my question. Okay. But I think what the person implies is this. Businesses that are, the person meant businesses don't open 10 to 2. I mentioned okay. something that some people want to work just between 10, 10 and, and 2. two. They don't want any, any work that we... Take them to, beyond take, 2 o'clock. They'll take them beyond 2 o'clock. And I said that if you want a thriving business, that you can't... That a thriving business, that if you see any thriving business, they don't open for 4 hours. And maybe she now meant then business would open like 8 to like 7 p.m. And in my own view, my um, church starts for 5.30 and I'm still at work at that time like 6 30 or 7 personal business personal business yes maybe she's trying to say you mentioned the fact that lazy business don't try don't, they don't drive 10 to 2 so i would suggest i'm starting my business 8 p 8 a.m and i'm closing like 8 p.m and meanwhile there'll be there'll be midweek service on tuesday and thursday yes okay that's that's another question now if that's the case now this one is different from yours now, what you are painting still now fits into the fact that if you have a business that needs to work for 12 hours, okay, you, then you have to gradually build a system that can make you leave your work while your business goes on. Okay? Uh, you understand? If you, for instance, you have a business that has to work 8 to 8. Maybe, I don't know, and it's maybe a typical E3. Let me use Kilimanjaro, for instance. Maybe you, have, you own a franchise of Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro, I think, opens 8. Uh, am I right? Maybe like 7.38 or 7. Uh, uh, and then they close by 8.39. Or maybe it's a, um, a Kilimanjaro okay, stays still that long. Okay, I think things are changing now. Initially, it used to be 8.30 at most. Like food court closes around 8.30. One um, we have one pharmacy in our area called Mosh. They close around 8.30. So, yes. Or, uh -huh. So, once you have a business that has to work late into the evening, Okay, then you have to work hard in building a system that can run without you. You are not the system. You are a owner of a business. So what the system does is that while you are not there, there's a system in place that still keep running. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's, eh? Yes, because there's no way you can build even successfully by being there all the time. You will break down because the pressure will be too much you are working for 12 hours every day. You don't have time to fellowship with God's word. You are not just going to break down physically. You are going to break down spiritually. And there will be nothing to do eventually. So, when you know that that's your nature of business, then start receiving wisdom. Both through, you may need to go for training. You may need to read books. And trust God to give you a way to do that business eventually. So that you can have time. Okay? If not even just for church. What about days that there are no church. Wouldn't you have time for family, for instance? You want to pray with your children. You want to have time with your wife. You, you know, that kind of life, you know, it serves as its own challenge. So what we are just teaching you is to have the wisdom to know how to plan things effectively so that you place premium on your spiritual growth, uh, but not, then also not suffer concerning whatever business you are doing. Okay? So you need a lot of wisdom and skill to get that done. Okay? So you can't close. Now, when she said that yesterday, you can't close the business, for instance. Maybe you are selling an extra lawyer, for instance. You open 10 and close 2. Okay? You can't do business like that and do well in business. Because, you know, um, there is a normal time people are in market. Uh, you know, at least morning till evening is the normal time. Then there's, I don't know if there's nice market in Ibadan. 
Or in Lagos, there's nine. There are some markets in Lagos. People resume five. And they walk to one. Have you, you know how those schools are? When we're in Lautech, in Ugumajor, there used to be one canteen in Sabo. They walk from evening till, till midnight. So at times, when, you, when we want to eat, 12 o'clock, we can go and eat. We just walk there and eat. You buy rice, plantain, fried meats, 12 o'clock. <laughs> so you understand? The reason that that business was done for, um, for night crawlers that travel from south to north, going through that uh, southern, you know, northern road through Ogumosho. So they just park their trailer and go and eat. So that, that person was targeting them. So you need to understand your business audience to know how to put your structure. And when you even put your structure, know your own time that you can't go be. You can't keep doing that. So you have to build a system that runs. So that is where staffing comes, you know, and all those kind of systems, you know, that we can't talk about today. And there's no rich businessman that stays in office all day. Go on, go on. If you can't study until they don't. They can't do that for a season. Over time, the business kicks off and have a life of its own. So they, they are there. That's why businessmen are the most, they, are the, they have the, they have time most. They have time. They will have yachts. They, they will buy yachts. They will be traveling. Go and look at them. They live, they live um, luxury life. Vacation. They can go on vacation. Uh, after the business is successful, though, and it has a system, they can choose to go on vacation for one month. Because there's a system in place that can work outside them. And there's a management system. So someone say, ah, my business cannot be managed if I'm not there. You have to learn how to manage your system when you're not physically there. You need staffs. You need systems to put in place. If not, you can't build a successful business that way. We have to learn to build businesses that can run without us. Okay? But this is not a business class. Okay? So let's, 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 make, let's move ahead. So we can work on that. Me, I think this one has to do more with mentality of you know. But you eventually find out that the a time will come, the money will not even come again. Because you don't have a structure that is that is viable enough to make sure that cash flow is consistent. <clears throat> okay, I'm I'm wondering. As a married woman, how do I manage being responsible to my immediate family and my maiden family? Okay, you want to... Uh, ah, it depends on the grace available for you. What I will tell you that your immediate family comes first. Okay? Uh, yes, it has to come first. For instance, I've not even taken care of mommy and Ulubi. I want to take care of uh, my maiden family. It may, it may not be practical okay now does not mean i can't i won't do something for them but it means that i don't have the resources to do that so what you just need to trust god is for that let that god will increase you and as he increases you will be able to do that but your immediate family is your responsibility your primary responsibility okay and then as your grace increases you'll be able and while you are doing it that if you have a maiden family that is putting pressure on you or does not understand you, you have to explain to them that I don't have what it takes to do this. You know, we have a maiden family that can be put in pressure and be saying, maybe you should be sending 50000 every month and your whole salary is, is 25000 <clears throat> If I 50000 is not even enough for your own family, 100000 is not enough for your own family and, and they want you to be sending 30000 every month, that, can, that equation will be balanced. So you, eh? It cannot work. Okay. So you have to be, you have to be patient enough to allow God to increase you. And at times you may love them and you want to do things for them, but at that time you can't do it. So as grace increases, God will grant you the competence enough to be able to do that. So focus on your immediate family, and as grace increases, extend it to your immediate family, and then that's how it, that's how it works. You can't, and if you have grace to do both. Why not? Okay, let's move. Can a carnal brother with a lot of weaknesses, but in hearing truth and have an open heart, marry a spiritual sister? No. Because
Because you know why I said no? This question, you are asking this question because you want something. I didn't start pastoring today. You are you are already compromised. Don't even marry a carnal brother. Do you want to be carnal? Why will a spiritual sister settle for a carnal brother? Why? Now, e Amen. Listen to me. You are not even spiritual. Because if a carnal brother is who you want to settle for, hello, it means you are not spiritual. Even you. You are going to a hello, Jubi girl. You are not spiritual at all. Because, amen. Have you had unequal yoking? Is it unequal yoking now? So, my, uh, my, is no. No. Wait for, wait for a spiritual brother. Are you to walk because as I, I suspect your spirituality. <laughs> amen. I, I am not making just for you. I'm only telling you the truth. Okay. Amen. Why will a lady that is really spiritual want to live? So it's no. So you know what I would advise? Listen to me, please. Let's not it's a serious question. You know what I advise? Don't put don't make marriage be in view. Love have encourage that person to love truth with not a plan of marrying the person. You know, at times you can like a brother, he's not he's not open to your kind of understanding. Okay, but make sure that your emotions does not take over you, like my wife taught yesterday. Let it be a brother, uh, a friend to friend relationship. Let it prove over time that this particular person can really be a spiritual person that you can eventually marry. And let that judgment not be subjected to you alone. You are pastors, they can help you check. Eh? The Bible says, The multitude of counsel, there is what safety. Don't, don't let it begin and end with you. You are not Alpha and Omega. Eh? the Lord will help you. I know it's not easy. Amen. But the Lord will help you. Okay? So, but over time, if he has capacity for truth and he loves truth, why not? There are many, many cases that have ended up that way. Friends that eventually got married. You know? Beautiful stories here and there. Okay? So, just carry us along. Okay? Let's, let's move on. Okay. Danny and mommy, uh, as a woman, uh, my wife won't do this because she's a woman. Okay. It doesn't matter. You're a woman. You know, at times we don't know what women go through. Uh, even as men. How do I handle a partner who is hard to. Ah. Uh, well, you know what? You know what? Who is hard to deal with when under pressure? Believe God for grace. See? It's just more growth. Remember my teaching on Thursday on charity. When you get more spiritual, you can bear people more. Okay? So, I know what you may be going through may be difficult, but ask God to help you with grace. Because the person is your partner. You have to learn to bear the person more. And if you bear more, paradventure, the Lord will use your, your, your long suffering to save your partner. It's in First Peter chapter 3. Can we check it out? Yes. Your chest conversation can win your husband over. Okay, so don't lose hope. Likewise, ye wise, be in subjection to your own husbands. Okay, even if he's an unbeliever. That's what it means. That does not mean you marry as an unbeliever, but maybe both of you married as unbeliever and you got born again or you came into understanding before him. That says that if any obey not the word, that also may without the word be won by the conversation of their wives. So if you give yourself fully to this doctrine, you will win your husband. Uh, amen. amen. That's my answer for you. So be more. Trust God for grace. The Lord will show up in your home. Amen. I want us to answer a few more. Just one more question. Just one more. We can't answer. We'll do, we'll do the rest on Tuesday. With other ones. Yes. Uh, okay. This one is mommy. Okay. Can we set the table? The communion table? Um, so the question is, in raising children, how do you balance correction on a habit a child takes on regularly? Beating the child impacts fear, and talking he forgets easily. 
How do you correct such a child without making him eat? <laughs> Between so, the child is not in bad fear. <laughs> it's, it's part of, it's part of, training, the <laughs> it's part of training the child. It's part of training. So, beating is not... Beating a child, you know, using the rod. Don't let me use beating. Yes. Let me use the biblical word. Using a rod, rod. on a child is not... Um, is not is biblical. Yes, it's, it's not. It's not wicked. To train a child. Ben. And really, I believe that when when children are growing up, there's a level of fear they must have for you. Yes. Before they can fear God, they have, they have to, to fear, fear you. You know. So there's a level of fear your child should know that if I do ah I can't do this thing you no know, because of my daddy because of my mommy before they really understand the God concepts behind even obeying commandments. It's it's idea that a child should even have some level of fear and reverence for their parents, trying to put control over some of the things they do. So that's the. But you know what? What I what, what I believe is that for every correction you make, you should let the child know why you are making that correction. So if you beat a child, before you beat the child, you need to explain to the child why you are doing it, and ensure that the child knows the reason why you are doing it. So you might ask, okay, why am I um, doing this, the child will say, okay, because you've told, you've told me I should not do this thing again, and now I'm disobedient. So what is the consequence? The child will tell you, okay, so it's four strokes of the cane, and you beat the child. And after you've beaten the child, the child has finished crying. You ask the child again, why did mommy beat you? The child, so that, you know, what, what, what we didn't have most times was that our parents really, you know, they did a lot of things without us even knowing why you know, we were being beaten. And it's also good to use the word to correct. That's one of the things that I've also learned. To also use the word of God to correct. What they have see, whatever they have done yes. from the scriptures. From the scriptures, see, yes. This thing that you are doing, this is what the Bible <laughs> Who says, says about, about it. it. And so, you know, you make them see, also correct them from the scriptures. For example, like my daughter now, sometimes the way she talks. So, I open from the scriptures. So many times, I said I have to go and read about her big girl, to go and read about our people, people that don't talk, people that talk, and yeah, what happens to them. Sometimes you use the scripture to call it, and then after that, then you put rules. So, for example, after that, if she, if she, if she insults anybody or talks rudely to anybody, they should beat her. They should, they should so, smack her. The, so she knows. So, in fact, the last <laughs> one she did, but I might wanted to beat her. She ran away. She ran. <laughs> She came up, said she went to hide in the, with the toilet. No, no, because I already so she knows. And I told her why. Said she actually forgot. But well, you know, that is not still <laughs> an excuse. So, um, for a parent, uh, correcting a child by you do both talking and uh, then actually they must know that there is there are consequences. Consequences. Not yes. That you beat a child and then you don't beat the child. They will just assume that your mommy is just joking. So you do the talking, both with talking, talking with the word. And also with the rod. Ben, you give them according to their size. Uh, according so, to their age. Yeah, so there are different things that you can use when you want to. So, for example, you don't want to, you know, do that, all those small toddlers. You can use the back of You don't go and break yes, so for those ones. No, but you, the ones you, that you are old <laughs> enough, you can get good back for, for them, them and they know. So, um, it's, it's, part of, it's part of raising up a child um, um, very well. So you do it to, uh, like, like you said, sometimes they forget. So you keep reinforcing it's just like reinforcing. But if you keep sparing the child, the, that attitude, that particular attitude will become um, how do I put it? It will, it will become um, it will become part and parcel of their life. Of their life. But you time you know that if I do this, there is a concept. For example, sometimes not even beating. Sometimes maybe their, uh, their television hours, you can you say, okay, if short. you do this thing, I'm removing five hours screen time. Throughout this weekend, no screen time. If you do this, you are not having this thing. You know, some level of punishment. Not even with the rod. So, it's good to do that. By the time you do that over and over and over again, it becomes, it will register something in, in inside them. them over time. So, yes. don't, so don't be... Don't be, don't, be, don't be permissive, don't be permissive as, a parent. As, a, as a parent. Don't be discouraged if they don't get it once. Yes. Don't be afraid of correcting them, them again over and, and over, over again. And over and over again. Their children. Yeah. At times, even when they grow up a little bit, they still make those mistakes. mistakes. You know, there's a place you pray for them. You wish them, you know, trust that they will change ever. But just make sure you are doing your, your, your role as a parent. And then when you are beating them also, you know, um, you know, God is helping us. Some of us don't know how to beat. Even me, I don't know how to beat. You know, so I, I stopped beating my children, really, physically, because um, they're already growing up. Maybe once in a while I can do it, but 
they are growing up. I do more of talking and punishment. When you reach a particular age, when your children are teenagers, for instance, there's a little physical beating can do. If at times they, they pride in how much you beat them and they don't cry. <laughs> so you understand? So, so you may not win. So, but punishment. You know, you look for something that will pain them. Maybe seize their, their tablet. You know, all those kind of things. Uh -huh, that one will pain them more. So you need to be wise as a parent. You know, they, they punish, even God met punishment. Do you know that? Uh -huh. So there is always, there's always a consequence for not doing something well. Uh, you need a very firm mind to be a parent. If you are weak-hearted, you can't parent. Yes, you need to be, a, you need to be firm, have a firm heart, then you need to be tender at the same time, so that oh, oh, you had you. You know, you know, some parents are so hard, they don't have mercy. And some parents, they are so tender that they don't have values. Okay? So, you need to be able to strike a healthy balance. Okay? My children fear me, but they know I love them. But they fear me somewhere. They know what I can do. Um, and when I notice that they want to take me for granted, I know how to deal with them. You know, at times, when you are nice to your children, over time, they may want to take you for granted and quickly want to do something and get away with it. It's good to surprise them. Just do something that they never thought you could do. That will shock them and it also registers something in them that you can't take daddy and mommy for granted. God bless us. Can we, can we begin to pray? Can we begin to pray? Let's, let's begin to pray. Let's just begin to... Uh, we, we, we want to leave here before two. Uh, let's, so let's begin to pray. Father, we give you thanks. I want us to begin to pray. Father, we give you thanks. Let's just pray. Thank you, Lord. We give you thanks. Lord, we thank you for a supply of your spirit. We thank you for help. We thank you for mercy. We thank you for grace. We thank you for causing abundance of light to be shown upon the darkness of our hearts. We thank you because you are helping us to live according to grace. Thank you, our Father. Lord, we give you thanks. We thank you. Can you ask God uh, for grace as we approach the table of the Lord this afternoon? Lord, the, Lord will, um, the Lord will speak life to you. will cause you to come into great understanding. One of the things that happens when we break bread is that we come into a new dominion of understanding like it was seen in scripture. When Jesus broke bread before the disciples on the way to Emmanus, the Bible says that their eyes were open and their veils were taken off. And so, Lord, we believe that highs of understanding will be enlightened. We believe that veils will be taken off. We believe that people will come into initiation into the life of grace. Practically living and executing the life of grace upon the earth. Lord, I ask that you grant every heart understanding. Lord, I ask that you open eyes of understanding. Lord, I ask that you cause your people to be wise according to the wisdom that is from above. Lord, I ask that you cause us to live a life that prevails over Babylon over the darkness of this world. You cause us to execute the beauty of your life here on the earth. I thank you for your cup. I thank you because this is the New Testament in your blood. Lord, I pray that as we partake of this cup, Lord, you will grant us a renewal understanding in your life. You will cause us, cause us to have breakthrough into your thoughts. Lord, you will cause us to come into a greater sense of submission to your commandments, submission to your laws, Submission to your doctrine for the salvation of our souls. We give you thanks. Lord, we give you thanks for the body and the bread of our Lord Jesus. Lord, as we partake of this bread, cause us to hold the word of life. Cause us to hold the word of life. Let us have a stake in the kingdom of God. Yea, let us have a stake in the inheritance of life. Cause your people to grow up and lay hold on the promise of life. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that all that partakes of this table, none shall be weary. We shall grow from strength to strength, from understanding to understanding, from glory to glory. For our hearts will be, will be steadfast in seeking you. Lord, our hearts will be established in grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just have it. Can we have someone sing? Is Sister Ife around? Sister Ife, come and sing.
Thank you, Jesus. Cause this was to mix with blood in me. Let it become my reality. Take my mortality from me. Cause this was to be the life I live. I will do faith, hope, and charity till Christ is all that's left of me. Would you cast this words to mix with love in me? Let it become my reality. Take my mortality from me, Jesus. Would you cast this words to be the life I live? I will do faith, hope, and charity till Christ is all that's left of me.
praise to the high praise. Now we start from of good, good things to come. Hallelujah. our hands to God. Lord, we thank you for the supply of grace through the table. We thank you because, Lord, you are helping our hearts to be stable. You are helping our hearts to love you, to follow you, to obey you, and to please you in all things. We thank you for grace upon every heart that has partaken of the table. We thank you because we believe by faith that this grace will increase in obedience. In Jesus' name, and the people said, Amen. Let's have a seat briefly. We are having two dedications and we are off. <laughs> Pastor and Mrs. Friday Yusufu. We are dedicating. Um, if they're calling me Fetty Baba, but I prefer Atu, Atuluku. I said it's Atuluku, I'll be calling him. That is the meaning of the name. It means three of life or something. Incorruptible tree or something like seed. Uh, okay, a uh -huh. very powerful name, you know. So, Atuluku. I know somebody called Ben Atuluku, so you know, he rings the name. Uh, I like that Atuluku. So, we are dedicating Ifeti Baba Atuluku Yusuf and also um, Mr. and Mrs. Obafemi. Amen. I, I, I forgot the name of the baby. Ayokumi. Yeah. You know, I, I name babies, I forget immediately. Lord, help me. Amen. So I want both of them to come and dance and bring their babies who pray. Uh, uh, more babies are coming now. How many of you know that we need a bigger church? Amen. It, it will come. Don't worry. Maybe we increase this place or something. Or go move to a bigger place. Amen. So let's stand to our feet and rejoice with them. Pastor Friday, Sister Noe, Mr. and Mrs. Sobafemi, Oguyoye.
Congratulations, Pastor Friday, Sister Doi. Amen. The baby has come now. Hallelujah. Sister Buki, Brother Bafemi, congratulations. We have the baby has landed. Hallelujah. We rejoice with you. We thank God for grace. Oh, these two babies are miracle babies. Miracles, you know, uh, you know, God just supernaturally kept these children. We well, thank God for this. It's not the working of any man, it's just God. I want to thank God. We rejoice with you. We thank God because the grace we enjoyed during the um, conception and the, you know, the, um, the growing of this baby in your wombs will continue. Uh, you know, it will, I just sense that these children are children of grace. Can we lift up our hands and just stretch? Let's just pray. We have dedicated them or I prayed for them already, but we'll just receive them into the church. Lord, we thank you for these babies. We, we appreciate them. Sweetheart, can you join me? We thank you. We receive them into your community. We thank you for Ayokumi. We thank you for Atuluku. We receive them into your house. We thank you because, Lord, this is also an additional increase the life of those children. Lord, we pray that these children will serve God. Amen. They will perpetually please you. Amen. Lord, we dedicate them as your children. Amen. Lord, these ones will not be children of Belial. Amen. They will bring pleasure to you. Amen. They will bring pleasure to their parents. Amen. They will serve your, their generation according to your will. Amen. They will live on the earth as heaven on earth. Amen. Fulfilling your counsel for their lives. In Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Congratulations. I don't know if you have anything to say. Uh, we'll give you an opportunity. Daddy, mommy, congratulations. Mommy, congratulations. I saw Daddy Suarez in the house. That's Pastor Sigis. Pastor Sigis, Daddy. Daddy and mommy, you are welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. We love you, Daddy and Mommy. Thank you for coming to fellowship with us. So, uh, do we have any testimony? Uh, well, time has gone, so but just shh, brief. Pastor, no testimony. The word of God was just working. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Sister D. Amen. I rejoice with you. But about me, I rejoice with you. Buki, I thank God for your life. Can we rejoice with them? You can go back to your seat. God bless you.
Ipa, 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 Ipa,